Hey everybody, and welcome to another piano review video here on Miriam Pianos on YouTube. My name is Stu Harrison, and in today's video, we're looking at VI Labs Ravenscroft 275. This is a virtual piano instrument that runs in pretty much every DAW environment you can imagine. Today, we're gonna be operating within the Logic environment. And I loved hitting this plugin because I remember the very first time I heard it, and it was exactly the same moment I played a real Ravenscroft 275 piano for the first time. So it's very exciting. Uh, if it is the first time that you have found us here on YouTube, we would sincerely appreciate if you hit subscribe and the notification bell because we'd love for you to be back for future videos. And by all means, please comment throughout the video. Let us know what you thought, uh, anything that we may have missed. We love the community that's continuing to grow around these videos. So without further ado, Let's get started with the Ravenscroft 275 right away. So I always love to start with a little bit of background. I mean, whether it's an acoustic piano, whether it's a digital piano, I just get into whatever it is that I'm reviewing a little bit more, the more I know about it. And so I'm just going to assume that at least a few of you out there fall into the same camp. So we are listening to the Ravenscroft 275, this uh, plugin from VI Labs. They've done a really killer job of it. Uh, props to these guys. Um, I remember the very first time I experienced uh, both the Ravenscroft 275, the actual piano, as well as this plugin because they had them set up side by side. I believe this was NAM 2015 or 2016. I can't quite remember, but it was one of those two. And they had uh, the Raven Works, which is actually a modified Kawhi VPC1 controller hooked up to this rig, basically running this VI Labs. And both were just mind blowing. For me, they were the highlights of that show. Uh, now this is of course jumping back a few years, but it really made a serious impression on me. Um, and I don't know why it took me this long to rediscover this plugin, but I am really glad that I have. Uh, a bit about the piano that this plugin is based on. Cause if you can't get into that, um, there's many other plugins out there that you can you know go and get excited about, and they all sort of sample the usual suspects: the Homburg D and the Imperial Busendorfer, the Beckstein 280 or the 282, or you know whatever. Um, uh, all of the uh, yeah the the kind of the usual concert going fair, but this Ravenscroft. Uh, is a unique beast. First of all, there's only a handful of these actual pianos that have ever been made. Um, I would be surprised if there's more than 10 on the whole planet. Maybe there is. Maybe he's got up um, past that point. But I think uh, the serial number of the one that they actually sampled for this was four. Uh, fourth one ever built. There's a couple of really cool things about this piano. Um, it's a super boutique maker. Uh, this is a nine footer, I guess just slightly under a nine footer at 275 uh, centimeters. Uh, Souter in Germany um, actually makes the rims uh, for these folks. Um, and this is uh, Bob Spreeman uh, working in Arizona. And he uh, kind of named this piano after a composer that had really inspired him uh, to go after this goal of, of building his dream piano. Um, and the piano uses a thousand year old spruce for its soundboard. If I am not mistaken, that is the oldest uh, source of spruce that any piano maker uh, is building soundboard material out of, bar none. And why is old spruce such a good thing? Well, it, uh, it has the potential anyway uh, to be very well cured, it has the potential to have some very, very small uh, growth rings in it, which usually uh, leads to more efficient energy, uh, you know, transmission through the wood. Um, 
But also kind of just sounds cool to say that it's thousand year old wood that this thing's made out of. Uh, also, all the termination points in the front and the back of the duplex scaling are made of titanium and hence the piano kind of has this nickname of titanium. Um, and the piano is impeccably uh, built. I mean, they take like a thousand hours uh, to make each one, which is double that of a Busendorfer Imperial, just to put that into perspective. So the piano is kind of cool and it definitely has a unique tone. And here is that tone. It's got this clarity to it um, that's a little hard to put into words. And the sustain is just gorgeous. I have to remind myself I'm not reviewing an acoustic piano right now, but in a way I kind of am.
Okay, so into some specific observations about this instrument, um, as well as the user interface. And actually, let's start with the user interface. Um, it's just one screen, basically. You've got edit. Um, you do have effects, but the effects aren't really specific to this plugin. The effects um, are more of the VI Labs effects, which uh, are available no matter what virtual instrument of theirs you've got loaded into their player. So this is working within their own uh, UVI workstation, so it's not contact, it's not anything, it's, it's their own thing. And this also does uh, op uh, can operate as in a standalone uh, function as well. Uh, so when we're in the edit, we have a fairly um, you know, basic set of parameters here. We've got uh, pedal noise, release volume, key noise, kind of the mechanical stuff here on the left. Then we've got stereo width and tone down on the lower left. A bunch of the MIDI assignments uh, over here, as well as uh, some other pedal um, options. We've got the sensitivity, your kind of dynamic range. And then we've got all of this um, other resonance, sympathetic resonance on the right. But the bulk of what you're going to wind up playing with on this plugin is not any of that. It's what's in the center. And what's in the center is four completely different sample sets. And I'm actually not certain of how many layers, but uh, I can't detect uh, just any stepping whatsoever between any of these. So I mean, for sure it's at least 12. I wouldn't be surprised if it's 16 uh, velocity layers uh, on here. And they have four uh, totally different mic placements. So you've got uh, the player perspective, which is two stereo microphones uh, hung kind of right behind where you'd be. So those mics are hearing what your ears would hear if you were playing the instrument. Uh, then we've got close miking, which is kind of a traditional, uh, you know, two mics over both of the bridges, the treble and the bass bridge. Um, side microphones, which some engineers really like uh, the sound of, particularly if you're trying to just get low levels of that cabinet resonance, you know, you can pick it up that way. Um, and then some room tone. Uh, so you have some natural ambience or some uh, really just kind of let the piano bloom a little bit so it's not super detailed and you can kind of mix and match. Uh, and so the whole kind of, uh, you know, uh, thing that you wind up fooling around with here is all of these different combinations uh, and you, you, you just find yourself mixing. Um, and in that regard, this comes, in my opinion, kind of the closest to uh, the Vienna Symphonic Library stuff where they've got uh, six, seven, eight different uh, sample sets uh, based on different mic placements all around that gigantic room where they've cap captured a lot of that Vienna stuff. Uh, so you don't get quite the same um, room effect as you do on that plugin, or say Cinepiano, or even the Garrison CFX. Uh, they've they've recorded this in a pretty dead room. I mean, as far as recording chambers go. So this sounds like it's been captured in the studio versus in like a larger soundstage. So. Um, one, it's not a drawback uh, per se, but it's just something to be aware of to really get some larger ambient warm effect uh, on this piano. You are going to have to go to their convolution uh, reverb engine, which they've got down here. It's very easy to control. They don't over overwhelm you with a whole bunch of different parameters. It's like literally the wet dry mix and then what uh, reverb model uh, you're gonna do. So I did find myself uh, playing with this more than I would have expected to because those room mics just weren't doing it for me. Um, the other thing that I found really interesting is that I had a completely different preference when I was playing with headphones versus when I was playing with monitors. When I was playing with headphones, to just put on the player sample set was magic. I mean, it transported me right back to the moment where I was actually in front of that piano. I mean, it just felt so real. Um, and I guess if you like the piano, if you vibe with the piano acoustically, then I think you just 
absolutely completely love this. So I'm actually going to shut off all of this other these other samples. I'm going to load the player. Boom. So now all we're hearing is the player sound and we're going to turn this so there's only a very little hint uh, of that. And I'm just going to play this. And actually, I'm going to throw on a set of cans uh, just so I can experience this as well. See, I love that with the cans on, but when in the, I'm listening in the monitors, it doesn't have quite the same effect. I guess because it's supposed to have this intimate connection, but then you're listening on monitors which are a few feet away from you, so it kind of almost is self-defeating that way. Now, what I find when I'm listening on monitors, however, is actually a combination of the close and the room at about half. So this is like, if I'm playing through some speakers or listening back to something, this is what I find the most satisfying right now. Yeah, uh, there are a few other settings, but I didn't mention them up front because very likely you're almost never going to touch them unless you've got some pretty specific uh, projects and needs uh, where you might need to get into some micro tuning or individual note tuning or anything like that. Uh, you do have the option of uh, affecting uh, your touch curve uh, and your tuning stuff, but more or less this main widget settings uh, screen is where you're going to spend most of your time experimenting and mucking around uh, with this Ravenscroft. So the strengths of this plugin uh, is that in a relatively simple, easy to navigate uh, main user interface, this is uh, really giving you the piano in a raw, uh, very unaffected um, uh, usable engine 
and it's giving uh, these four different sample sets so you can uh, play around with all of the different uh, mic placements that changes the character of what's been picked up. And I think that's just really cool. It's a really awesome way to celebrate an instrument because you're not putting the instrument through all of these different effects engines and uh, EQing it to death. I mean, of course, you could uh, put this within a channel strip with all kinds of other plugins and go nuts with it. Um, but that isn't how they've presented this in uh, the plugin in an isolated sense on its own. Um, I think for solo piano playing, this could be gorgeous. like jazz, classical, contemporary, you name it, I could see this being really super versatile for all kinds of exposed solo piano stuff. Now I have tried this in a few projects where it was mixed in uh, with quite a few other things and I actually had to go out of my way uh, to try and give it a little more uh, lower mid presence uh, not just in that range, but like on all of the notes, it just, it didn't quite punch through and the high end was actually competing with a lot of other uh, instruments that you normally want occupying that range. So it didn't mix as naturally as I would have liked, but I found ways around that uh, using some basic EQs, uh, a little bit of multiband compression. So, um, you know, it can be used, I would say, in virtually any type of project, but I did find that it was most naturally suited for exposed solo uh, piano playing or some very lightly uh, orchestrated stuff, very lightly arranged stuff. Uh, but for the most part, I think they totally nailed uh, the Ravenscroft 275 instrument. I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful, I, I dare say almost perfect capture of this piano and I just can't believe to just return to the beginning of the story uh, how uh, vividly this plugin transported me back to that piano. So for those of you who have played the acoustic and have always wanted uh, a, a an affordable way to bring it into your own living room, trust me, this is not going to disappoint you. And for people who have never done it, well, this is actually a really faithful um, example or faithful uh, uh, method of accessing that super unique tone that that piano produces. Anyway, I hope that you've enjoyed this look at Ravenscroft. We're definitely going to be including this in some comparison videos. Uh, I'd love to put this up against, uh, say, uh, the Vienna Symphony Yamaha CFX. That would be a really interesting uh, matchup uh, to me uh, and probably a few others as well. If it's the first time that you have found us here on YouTube, we would really sincerely appreciate if you did subscribe, hit that notification bell. We'd love to see you back for more videos in the future. And last but not least, I hope you've liked this video. Please let us know what you thought of it, uh, whether you uh, found it useful, um, add any commentary that you think other viewers uh, might find interesting. Uh, we love it all. My name is Stu Harrison. This has been Miriam Pianos on YouTube. Have yourself a great day and we'll see you again soon.